Welcome everyone, my name's Dom, and this is the iPhone 13 Pro, the iPhone 13 Pro Max to be exact, and I'm not gonna lie, I hated it when Apple announced this phone. Not because it's a bad phone, but because this iPhone is not the iPhone 13 to me. This is more like the iPhone 12s. This phone looks exactly like the 12 Pro Max, albeit slightly bigger, it's slightly heavier, slightly thicker, the camera's slightly bigger, etc. Which to me makes this iPhone more of a 12 than a 13. But after spending some time with the phone and kind of changing the way I've been thinking about phones in today's day and age, I ended up not actually hating this phone as much as I thought I would. And if you had the same thoughts on this phone as, as I had, uh, hang tight because by the end of this review, I hope that you will not only see what I mean when I say this phone isn't as hateable as I initially thought, but you'll actually know whether or not it's worth getting based on what phone you currently have. So let's get into it. So let's quickly run through kind of all the new stuff, right? Uh, basically, yeah, it's bigger overall. ProMotion finally made a debut. It's got a smaller-ish notch, and the new exclusive color is Sierra Blue, which I did not opt in for this year. There's no USB-C or Thunderbolt here, which I'll get into a little later, and there's no in-screen Touch ID fingerprint printer, and the list goes on, right? But this being such a minor update and the phone being so similar to the 12 may be a bit deceiving at first because there are some pretty noticeable quality of life improvements here, starting literally with the insane battery life. No joke. I've been running this thing screen on the whole time for multiple hours just to see the battery life trickle down by a few percentage points. If battery life is your number one concern and you find yourself working your phone hard day to day, definitely consider this as an option, even if you have last year's iPhone. And I'm willing to bet this insane battery life is mostly due to the addition of ProMotion in this phone. Yes, the processor is certainly more efficient than last year, and I'm sure there are other optimizations and tweaks throughout the phone, but I don't think people realize just how draining the screen can be on a phone. ProMotion was first introduced a few years ago in the iPad Pro. Pro. And ever since then, I have been praying for the day it would show up in the iPhone. ProMotion, for anyone who isn't familiar, is the phone's way of changing the frequency of refreshing what's on your screen to either really, really fast or really, really slow based on what you're doing, which can not only save on battery life, but also make your phone feel really, really responsive when you're dragging your finger along and interacting with your apps and what have you. But the ProMotion here has not felt very wow like I was hoping it would. In the past, whenever Apple would add big time features to an iPhone or any of their products really, I remember it always feeling amazing right out of the box. But since iPads and so many other phones have had quick refresh screens for years now, ProMotion here just doesn't feel all that special. It's there, yes, and you will notice it whether you're familiar with quick refresh screens or not, probably more so if you're not familiar with them, but it still doesn't feel as wonderful as I had hoped. I know apps still need to be updated in some cases to take better advantage of ProMotion, so that could be what's holding it back this time, but I mean, well, that's what we have complete reviews for, right? The screen appears to have some other tweaks as well, you know, like improved colors and brightness and what have you, and you know, they're certainly noticeable, but I can't necessarily say they're game changers here, but I mean, they're welcome upgrades nonetheless. The notch is still there and is smaller, but nothing is being done with any of the new screen space created by it. And to be honest, you probably won't even notice anything's changed with it at all during day-to-day -day use. Moving away from the screen, the phone overall feels ever so slightly heavier, which I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. You know, the, the extra half makes the phone feel extremely dense in a good way, but I now find myself switching hands more often than I remember due to that extra weight, but I'm sure it's just something I need to get used to, but I mean, time will tell, right? The biggest changes though you'll find in this phone are in the camera, which Apple has made bigger. And if you're new here, I, I hate camera bumps more than anything else on modern phones. And every year Apple makes them bigger and bigger and it drives me up the wall. But for me, it's all about two things when it comes to the camera. And the first is the macro lens and it is super sweet. The macro lens allows the phone to focus on objects that are very, very close up to like two centimeters. And when the camera detects such a proximity with an object, it'll automatically and noticeably switch to the ultra wide lens on the back of the phone and let you take macro shots and not just with photos, but actually with videos too, which I am very proud of Apple here for including macro video, which I would have assumed they would have locked, you know, to just pictures for this phone, right? For this generation of this phone and give it to us next year. Like give it to us in video next year to make, you know, the next year's iPhone the best iPhone ever in another way. And the next is being able to record video in ProRes, which I will be doing a complete explanation video for. So if you're new here and want to know more about what the f ProRes is and why you should care, get yourself subbed up and I'll get you all caught up because I use ProRes 
a lot. All the footage I shoot for this channel gets edited as ProRes footage, so being able to record directly to it rather than have to encode footage to, to it afterwards is huge for me, but I would imagine for most, this feature will be very dangerous. You see, ProRes makes super duper, like way super duper huge file sizes, and if you record your video with it by accident, you will nuke your phone storage. File sizes of your videos can reach up to six gigabytes per minute when recorded in ProRes. This is probably why the 128 gig model of the A13 Pro is limited to only recording ProRes video in 1080p and not 4K, while the higher storage options can do both. Point being, if you plan on getting this phone, be sure you have ProRes turned off if you aren't planning on using it for editing. And this is why not having USB-C for faster transfers is a problem with this phone. USB 2 speeds were already kind of bad for transferring large video files to your computer, and ProRes videos will be that much worse. Even if the base iPhone 13 kept lightning and just the Pro got USB-C or Thunderbolt, I could live with that, especially when basically every other Apple product is using USB-C already in one way or another. Even the Apple Watch now takes the USB-C charger, right? So none of this makes any sense as to why the Pro phone doesn't have USB-C. Other improvements to the camera include bigger sensors and high specs and all that other crap, right? We get that stuff every year. And all of that is fine, but it doesn't mean as much to me since every picture just gets hit with a sky net's worth of AI processing power afterward. But the pictures are better than the previous models either way. Like they are actually decently better. Speaking of AI processing, Apple has brought portrait mode to video and has called it cinematic mode. Basically, you can add artificial blur to a video that can be adjusted after shooting it. And while this is pretty pretty cool. I think it'll just end up being kind of unused like slow fees, if anybody even remembers what slow fees are. You can also now take pictures with adjustments to color temperature and contrast using stylized photos, which is fine, but I would think most would want the most neutral color profile for their pictures when they're taking them and then make those adjustments in like Photoshop or their favorite, you know, picture editing software afterwards. But this brings up the fact, however, that the camera app in iOS has a serious need for a major update. This camera app is not pro by any means. And there's no reason why the pro iPhone with the pro camera can't also be accompanied by a pro version of the camera app where things like ISO, shutter speed, temperature, et cetera, can be manually adjusted the same way they can be adjusted on a DSLR or at least have an option in the advanced mode or whatever you want to call it for those who want it. Sure, there are third-party apps like that that can do that kind of stuff, right? But this is Apple we're talking about. It's so unlikely like them to not provide their own first party solution, especially with the version of the iPhone that's supposed to be targeted for professional workloads. When you bundle all this up, there's, yeah, there's really not a whole lot there, right? Like not much of anything that's game changing or even really like super great minor wise. So then what's the point of this phone being the iPhone 13 and not the 12S? Well, my guess is as good as anyone's really, but I think that the S models just don't make sense anymore. Not to Apple, right? All future iPhones are going to be incremental terms of their updates and features, and that could be tough to accept for those of us who've been keeping up with the iPhone since the beginning. If you've ever had the thought, oh God, what happened to the days when Apple was the one company year after year, leaving us waiting in anticipation for whatever amazing thing their latest and greatest iPhone was going to be able to do? Well, those days seem to be coming farther and farther apart from each other, I'm afraid. Phones are really, really, really good in today's day and age, and I think Apple knows that phones have advanced to levels far above and beyond what anyone thought they could do, and at a rate faster than any of us thought they would. If Apple were to take all their currently planned like huge features and updates and just dump them into the latest iPhone every single year as soon as they could, then the day when, you know, a phone is no more impressive than a laptop or TV will get here faster. And right now, Apple needs to keep the iPhone at least somewhat exciting until the next big thing comes around. I'm willing to bet they thought that the Apple Watch was going to be like the next big thing. And while the Apple Watch is revolutionary in many ways, I'm willing to bet Apple thought that the Apple Watch was going to be that next big thing. And while the Apple Watch is revolutionary in many ways, it's found its place as a companion health tracker device. And I don't see it going much farther than that. And Apple has become financially dependent on the profits that the iPhone pulls in every year. And if they skip a year, that could cause quite a mess for not only future iPhones, but for future Apple products altogether. And love them or hate them, Apple and the iPhone are essential to the smartphone industry. Smaller companies will not take the same risks doing things because if they get it wrong, it will cost them too much money in the long run. And so this is why you will see companies only do something big for better or for worse after Apple does it. Apple is positioned in the industry 
in such a way that they can afford to make big changes to move things forward, even if that means they'll take the heat for it. Agree or disagree, the removal of the headphone jack gave us a huge new market of wireless headphones and earbuds that we may not have had yet and are, at least in my opinion, significantly better of an experience than wired headphones ever were. Yes, Apple made a big deal about it and talked about courage and all that stuff like that, and they took all the heat for it and other companies are making fun of them. But now more companies are doing the same thing to their phones too. So this moderate update, if you even want to call it that, to the iPhone is not the sign that, you know, the end is nigh, but is all about spacing things out and taking our time and optimizing what we have now to keep things moving until that next big thing gets here. I'm betting on Apple glasses, but that's just me. And companies have been doing this minor update year to year thing to their products for decades, right? TVs, cars, laptops, you name it. And once tech gets good enough that people hold on to their stuff longer and longer than they ever had before, that means that those big wow moments we once got year to year will now be gotten with more years in between and will be experienced when we combined all of the, you know, iterative small updates together collectively. And once I took all this into consideration, I found myself not hating the 13 as much as I thought I would. Seriously though, what the f with this camera bump? Like what the f Apple, seriously, you can't make it flush with the phone? Like, come the fuck. If you're still wondering about whether or not you should upgrade, I will tell you my personal recommendation is if you're currently on the iPhone 11 Pro or 12 Pro, don't upgrade. If you have anything that is an iPhone 10 or older, you can totally upgrade and you'll probably be very, very happy with the 13. But as for the non-pro options, I haven't been able to test any of them myself, but I will be putting, you know, future thoughts on non-pro and this and everything else on Twitter. So definitely go give us a follow over there as I come across them over the next year that I spend with this phone. That being said, if you guys can let me know down below how I did with this review, I'd be really, really appreciative. I'm trying to get like a little more professional with this whole, you know, tech review thing. So the feedback is great and great appreciated. And if you know, you like this video and all that stuff like that, definitely hit the like button for me. I appreciate it a lot. And I say this all the time, please consider sharing the video. It helps the channel out a lot as well. And as always, talk to you soon.